Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. Once again, we greet you with Jesus' joy on today. What a privilege it is just to be able to come aside and focus on the life and legacy of such a great man, Rodney Allen. We salute him in his absence as one of the sweet psalmists of Israel. We thank God for his ministry while he was on the face of this earth. But even though he is sleeping in Jesus at this time, the ministry, life, and legacy that he left with us lives on. And so I want to salute his mom. I want to salute his brother and sister in a very special way and just let them know that we're still lifting them up in prayer. They are still in our hearts. And brothers and sisters, we long for the day when our faith will become sight, when we will see Rodney again. But most importantly, we will see the one who will resurrect Rodney from his resting place. We long for that day. Let us hold on to Jesus until that time. May God richly bless us. I'm going to offer a word of prayer at this time. Father, in Jesus' name, we're thankful to just breathe your breath of life. Even though, God, our hearts ache, but, Lord God, our hearts are comforted at the fact that the precious presence of the Holy Spirit is here with us, and, Lord God, is inside of us leading us through this maze of sorrow and grief. And now, Jesus, we pray, God, that not only that the Holy Spirit would stabilize us, navigate us through this maze, but, Father, in the name of Jesus, fix our eyes on the hope of Jesus coming. Father, Rodney longed for heaven, and, Father, we also long for heaven. So, Father, bless us with that hope until we see you in peace and our dear brother again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening in celebrating the life of Rodney Allen. I am Keith Allen, his older brother, and I just want to say thank you on behalf of the family for all of your calls, your texts, your support during this time. Can't believe it's been a year already. Time has really flown by. But I must say, with the prayers and thoughts and love from others, from everyone around, it's made this year a bearable one. He's gone, but he's not forgotten. I just want to share a few words with you before we start this concert this evening. One in particular um, that Rodney shared with me. He always was wanted to be the bigger brother, although he was the baby. He wanted to look out for others more so than himself. When my dad passed in 2001, I came back home to stay with my mom, and I told Rodney, I said, Rodney, you're a very good musician. You're a very good musician, man. I said, why don't you go off, go away and make it. Make it for yourself. He said, nah, bruh. I have more work to do. And those words, I have more work to do, mean more to me now than it did then. To me, it means now that his work was not just to, per for, to perfect his craft, which is something that he did anyway, but his work to, that he needed to be done was to spread the gospel, to mentor to young people. Rodney was a proponent he loved to encourage and be silly at the same time, but he loved to encourage young people and other musicians to be at their best. And what it took was to practice. I asked my eldest son this week if he missed his uncle. He said, Dad, of course I do. I said, well, what's one thing you can remember? He said, always to practice. So. To young people, young and old, 
Practice on your craft. Hone in on your craft. This concert this evening is going to display some of the young people, young people that he mentored, even those that he was a witness to throughout his life. I can never understand, and I don't understand to this day, how Rodney kept in contact with everybody. Big Rodney, little Rodney, however you want to call him. I don't know how he did it. But I just want to share with you a small little excerpt that one of his friends, Stephen Manders, wrote about Rodney. And I'm paraphrasing. My heart was broken at the news of this passing news of his passing, and it took me a little while to even accept that this was real. I found comfort this last week and a half in a few things. One, seeing all of the positive ways he impacted others. Two, the prayers and talking with my friends and family. Lastly, speaking with, his, with Rod's best friend that actually dropped him off at the airport before he passed. And she let me know that before Rodney got out of the car, he said, sis, you've got to hear this song by my brother, Stephen Manders. And he played the song, Heaven, Mercy. The song was originally meant to be released July 4th weekend but I pushed it back to July 10th, not knowing why, for any specific reason at all. But now I know that on this day, July 10th, 2020, Rodney would need it. I would need it, losing my grandmother the next day as well. The world would need it to find a little comfort in knowing that one day soon, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Not just to see Rodney, but to see all of our loved ones who've gone on before us. So on behalf of the Allen family, thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy the concert. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Rodney Allen Virtual Memorial Concert. Tonight's concert is to honor the legacy of our dear friend and brother, uh, Rodney Allen. All of the concert participants have contributed songs in tribute to Rodney. And let's be honest, we all tried our very best uh, knowing that Rodney would have something shady to say uh, to all of our faces, if it's anything less. Rodney was an incredible musician. Actually, that's an understatement. It's not an accurate description. He was a beast of a musician. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Rodney 21 years ago, 
through my husband, Chad Hammonds, who's also an amazing musician. And he was my boyfriend at the time. He and Rodney had become good friends uh, while Rodney was at Southern Adventist University. Uh, that's in College Dale, Tennessee. Well, soon after, uh, their friendship would blossom into a wonderful brotherhood. Uh, and at that time, Roddy made made it very clear that I was his little sister, and he was very protective. Um, I have so many stories about Rodney, and I, I think I'll share a couple of the juicy ones with y'all later. Uh, but tonight, uh, I want to just take the opportunity to uh, remember so many other wonderful things about him. I want to tell you uh, what's so special about him as an incredible musician, also while encouraging other musicians coming up along the way. Uh, when I first heard Rodney play, it was, I honestly, <laughs> I was dumbfounded. I mean, I was really thinking like, what did he just do? And how did he just do that? What was he thinking? It was just like insane. Um, and it's so funny because... Uh, many people and probably many of you uh, probably had a very similar experience when you first heard Rodney play. And um, I just remember seeing one of his best friends turned sister, Sarah, post uh, on Facebook a few days ago a memory of Rodney playing. And <laughs> Sarah's exact words were, I want to quit. I want to simultaneously quit piano and practice 23 hours a day because of Rodney. <laughs> that is totally it. Sarah, you hit the nail on the head. In fact, I quit. I quit piano between Chad, my wonderful boyfriend at the time, who was incredible on piano, and this beast of a musician, Rodney Allen. There was no need for me to play. I was 15 years old. There was no need for me to play anymore. I just need to focus on singing because they just had it on lock. And Rodney was truly a beast. Um, I, there's so many things that I can say about him, but... The one thing that I can remember is when I said I was going to quit, I didn't need to play. He would say, oh, no, no, sis, keep doing it. He would always encourage me. And I remember other musicians who weren't as encouraging. You know, there you, you guys have probably seen musicians, you know, have their talk about the not so great musicians, you know, the, the low men on totem pole. And I felt like I fell in that category, but I never felt like that from Rodney. You know, he always encouraged me to keep on doing it and that I was a beast in my own right, you know? And it's like coming from Rodney, you don't want to believe that, but that's the kind of heart he had. He was just an incredible human being. Um, one of the last things I want to remember about him as a musician is that uh, I, I recently asked my husband about um, or just recalling an instance where he encountered an artist or a song that kind of took his breath away or just made you like it impacted you in a certain way or made you feel, you know, made you speechless. And he, this was his list. He said, since Jesus from Kimber Rell's live in Memphis, Kurt Franklin's Hosanna. And Rodney freaking Allen. <laughs> we miss Rodney. We loved him deeply. And tonight we remember him and honor him through this evening of music and worship. I hope you enjoy. I remember Rodney as a masterful musician. And someone who exemplified excellence in how he shared his craft. I also remember him as being unafraid to be emotionally transparent and incredibly resilient amid whatever life threw at him. The first time I met Rodney was by phone, actually. Medically, he was having a hard time, and a mutual friend of ours recommended that he reach out to me, especially since I was also pastor of the Ephesus Church, where Rodney had been a member. And it was during that exchange, I remember Rodney being so transparent about how his most recent diagnosis was affecting him. We prayed together, conveyed best wishes, and I figured that that right there would have been the extent of our connection. Instead, what emerged from that moment over time was a genuine friendship. I mean, Rodney would be so deliberate in connecting, either stopping by the church office or just calling to check up on me and my family. And once his schedule became a bit more flexible, 
he started contributing to the music ministry at Ephesus again. The reason I know that this was more than a pastor member connection is because for whatever time we spent chatting, he was always an encourager. I wasn't solely encouraging him, but he was always encouraging me. Whenever he had a bit of a challenge and perhaps had to be hospitalized, he kept it quiet. One time I remember being peeved when I heard of a hospital admission he had long after he had been discharged. But the truth is, Rodney never wanted anyone to pity him or deny him opportunities because of what they perceived to be a limitation. I may have been bothered by his silence then, but now, in hindsight, I remember Rodney as a man determined to live life on his own terms, doing what he loved most, which was bringing joy to others through the ministry of music. And to be honest, that is a lasting example for my own life. One that I will never forget.
Grace and peace, good people. This is Pastor Lenoris McFadden. I just want to pause and give a reflection in honor of my friend, the late, great Rodney Allen. I remember back in the 90s, my god brother Aaron Tooks told me about uh, this amazing musician from his school, R.J. Henley. He's like, you got to meet him. You got to meet him. So I said, okay, bro. So I remember one day he brought him to Mount Zion, and he got on our baby grand piano and just produced a sound that was phenomenal. And I was like, oh yeah, he can play. And the rest is history. Over the years, we became good friends and he's played for proof and so many other things that we did. And one thing about Rodney, everybody knows him as a musician, but a lot of people don't know that Rodney should have been a preacher. Like Rodney not only played the gospel, but he lived the gospel. Um, there were times that he encouraged me with the word of God. He would call me Bishop. Bishop, you, you got to know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And um, we just miss that about Rodney, the gentle giant. And again, if you really knew Rodney, then you knew that Rodney was also a comedian. Uh, better yet, a prankster. I remember uh, the North St. Fadden and Proof, we had to sing at Dwight Moments Easter concert down in Fort Lauderdale huge event in this big church. It's packed. We get on the stage. Rodney and the band are playing. So we get out on the stage and we're looking for our musicians, right? So I'm just talking, 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 trying to waste time for the band to get in place. And lo and behold, the band comes through the door. Rodney leading the band. They have on church choir robes. They actually went through everything necessary, went through all the legwork to gather all these different church choir robes. And it just uh, uh, set a totally different atmosphere, to say the least, in that auditorium. But they got on those instruments and made the difference. And that's the thing about Rodney. We're not celebrating today because Rodney died. We're celebrating today because he lived and it mattered. Long live. Rodney Allen.
We hope you're having a great experience so far uh, and that wonderful memories of Rodney are flooding your mind. Um, Before we go further, I just want to reiterate that uh, Keith has uh, started the process of creating a scholarship fund uh, in Rodney's uh, memory. And so we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to donate Uh, You can do that through the cash tags that are going to be on the screen. Um, You could also uh, purchase the CD recording of Rodney's amazing project, Give Me Jesus. Um, All of the funds that are uh, that come from that project are going to be put towards uh, the scholarship and those scholarships um, will be. Uh, a blessing to some young man or woman. Uh, all the details about uh, who would who would uh, benefit from it have not been flushed out just yet, but Keith has been on top of that. And so we do want to honor the legacy of Rodney. And as Keith mentioned, um, Rodney was so adamant about work still needing to be done and that he had still more work to do. And so Keith is hopefully, um, you know, and prayerfully, wanting to see that that work gets finished uh, in Rodney's honor. All right, so I um, want to share a juicy story I told you earlier. So uh, Rodney is such a good friend. Rodney was such a good friend. Um, I, when my husband and I moved to Nashville uh, for school, Rodney came up to visit us, and we were actually trying to get Rodney to move to Nashville because he's such a beast of a musician, and uh, we felt like he would do really well here. Um, and, and we talked about it and he was thinking about it. So he came to visit. And uh, at the time I was a student at Fisk University, but it was the summertime and I was um, going to be hanging out with my then boyfriend, not husband. So Rodney came over to visit and he spent the night. And when they were all when we were preparing for bed, he realized I was still there. And he was like, he said to Chad, is she staying here? And Chad was like, yeah, yeah, she's staying here. Like, no, no big deal. And Rodney was like, yo, man, y'all need to get married. (laughs) He was so serious. And he was like, man, I want to see you in heaven. You know, and he was so adamant about us doing the right thing. And Chad reassured him that, you know, we were traveling to Chattanooga that weekend and um, I, it was not abnormal for me to, uh, ride with him to Chattanooga. And so, because Rodney was visiting, I needed to stay overnight. And so we weren't in the same room, but Rodney was like, yo, look, uh, uh-uh, uh, she, y'all need to get married. <laughs> and so, um, eventually we did get married, but that's just the kind of guy he was. Um, and just thinking about that kind of friend, you know, that kind of friend that doesn't have a problem speaking their mind and telling you the truth in love. You know, you want friends like that around. So that's the kind of friend we had in Rodney. All right, we're going to get back to it. We hope you enjoy the remainder of this presentation. What can I say about my brother, Rodney? My brother, my brother, my brother. I miss him every day. When I hear a chord that makes me want to sing, I think about Rodney. I call Ingrid and we cry and we talk on the phone. and Just remember all the good times and how he wanted everybody to be encouraged. Let's talk about the blood blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. That blood will never, ever lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me Today, it will never 
its power It soothes my doubts And calms my fears And it dries, dries my tears The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never lose its power Here's why It reaches to the highest Yes, it turns and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never.
trust in God again. Wow, it's been a year. Uh, there are so many memories um, about our little brother Rodney, our big brother <laughs> Rodney Allen. Um, one of my fondest memories is, uh, involves us with one of his cars. We were driving to Atlanta in his white Dodge Charger with blackout tint all the way around. And we got pulled over. Uh, and uh, police were suspicious. They were asking me questions, asking him questions, and made us get out of the vehicle. The next thing you know, we were surrounded by six, seven police officers who who were confident that somehow we were trafficking something. Um, and uh, after they searched the vehicle and they, uh, it was a pretty humiliating experience. Um, they, found, they found his bag and in the bag was his paperwork uh, uh, concerning his history in law enforcement. And uh, the, the officer turned and says, hey, are you law enforcement? To which he said, yeah. He says, well, why didn't you tell me? He says, because I shouldn't have to. You judged me before I got a chance, before I even earned uh, 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 suspicion. You looked at me and you already concluded that I was a criminal. And the cop was so embarrassed because now he had summoned all these supporting officers on a hunch that was no better than the color of our skin. And Rodney could have bailed himself out quickly and ended the experience, but he wanted to, he wanted to stand on his own mer merits. He didn't want special treatment. He wanted to earn everyone's respect. He believed that his talents would make room for him and that he deserved a chance like everyone else. And that's one of the fondest memories of Rodney because he didn't just believe that for himself. He believed that for everybody. Everybody deserves a chance. Everybody um, is on equal footing. And so I'm going to miss him. We're going to miss him. Um, I'm, my, my, my phone doesn't ping as often with text messages. And uh, we don't get odd phone calls. Reverend, Reverend, I got a question for you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, we, we love and cherish those memories and uh, hopefully um, we will see him again in the earth made new, in the heavenly, in the, uh, in the heavenly gates. Well, last year this time, or when the pandemic first began, Rodney started playing for our church, Mount Calvary, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tampa. Um, and he would drive down almost every weekend, come and crash at our house and and play for our church service. And mind you, this would be after, right after his dialysis, he would get on the road. Um, Rodney and I had an idea uh, that, hey, why not fly instead? And this would be better for you. You don't have to be on the road. Um and the weekend of July 10th, he called me that morning as he got to the airport. He said, I'm here. I still have a screenshot of that phone call. Um, and I'll be there. Um, sis, just don't forget to pick me up from the airport. <laughs> so I went to the airport to pick up Rodney, only to find out that Rodney never boarded the plane. Um the last time Rodney played for us, it was for a funeral. And the last song that he played for us was Total Praise. So Mount Calvary Praise team, we decided to get together and sing Total Praise in remembrance of Rodney. We know one day that we will see him again and we will still continue to give God total praise. Come what may.
This hymn just talks about heaven. Come on, let's sing it. I can't wait to get there. Our God. Says coming soon. It says one day he will crack the sky. It says we will tell. Let's take it up. It says no more heartache. It says no more sickness. It says no more dying.
Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. We know that Rodney was special to so many people, and he absolutely had the gift of making really most people that he came into contact with feel like you were his best friend. (laughs) He had the ability to make you feel like you were his family. Um, And so we consider you family because you were family of Rodney's. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you to those of you who decided to give. It's not too late. It's never too late. Um, If you want to continue the legacy of Rodney Allen, uh, we encourage you to go ahead and give through the cash tags um, or by purchasing the Give Me Jesus Project. Um, And that's a way that we can continue this wonderful legacy of this amazing friend, brother, uh, who we all cherish and will always remember. Um, that concludes our program this evening, and we actually hope to see you again next year uh, as we continue his legacy.